السلام عليكم ورحمة الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين We had finished the, the chapters of the book of Fiqh of Marriage by Sheikh Ibn Uthameen رحمه الله and uh, there are many questions that people uh, as the Sheikh of course uh, in the subject of, of marriage and I thought that we can, as a last session uh, today, inshallah ta'ala, mention some of the, the questions that he was asked and briefly the answer. Uh, one of the questions was about al-mahr. What's the ruling of al-mahr, or sadaq? Al-mahr, as we know, that it's something of value that the man would give to uh, the one to be uh, his wife. Uh, and so what's the ruling of it? And it's mentioned, of course, in the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, uh, He said that Al-Mahr wajib, it's mandatory for the marriage contract. It has to be done, even if they didn't say anything about it. Like usually in the marriage contract that they would say the ijab and the qabul, the offer and the acceptance is that uh, if the wali of the woman, the guardian of the woman, he would say, uh, for example, ibnati, uh, usually they would add to it ala kitabillah wa ala sunnati rasulullah wa ala al-mahr aw al-sadaq and based on the mahr that has been disclosed between us or so, he said, even if they didn't say anything, it doesn't matter in the contract itself. The marriage is, the marriage is valid, but there is mahr. And even if they don't say, they don't talk anything about the mahr, then she deserves the mahr that is um, equivalent to the like of her. And that's something to be, you know, uh, assessed based on whatever many things that, for example, where she's from, uh, her age, you know, things like this. And if, if someone, for example, make a condition in the marriage that um, the marriage is without mahr, you know, this is a condition that is not valid. So, and the ulama have differences of opinions whether if that condition is there, is the marriage itself is not valid or the marriage is valid, but this condition is not valid. And that means they have to uh, then give some mahr. And he mentions the opinion here of Shaykh Hussain Tamir, rahimahullah that if they make it as a condition that there's no mahr in the marriage contract, then the marriage itself is valid. Uh, and that's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأُحِلَّ لَكُمْ مَا وَرَاءَ ذَلِكُمْ أَن تَبْتَغُوا بِأَمْوَالِكُمْ In Surah An-Nisa, that it's permissible for you beyond that it's seeking with your wealth. So he made it as a, as a condition uh, to uh, not to have mahr, then the marriage becomes... Uh, Hiba or a woman, she gives herself to that uh, to be husband, and that's not permissible except for the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So therefore, the the marriage itself is not valid. And what's famous of the madhab that the marriage itself is, is as far as the marriage contract is concerned, is valid, but the condition it is not valid, and she has to have the mash. Okay, so. Um, Anyway, she, the mahr has to be given. And if, uh, can the wali, the man, like for example, the, the father of the woman, can she take some of, can he take some of the mahr or takes it all for himself uh, or spend it the way that he likes? Uh, this mahr is purely the, the right of the, the one to be the wife. And it's only for her. And if she, after she gets it, she gives hadiyah or a gift to whoever he wills, then it's up to her. 
because this is a pre- this is present in some cultures where the mahr is given to the father and the father spend usually for his daughter like buying furniture and things like this which is not permissible for him to have it it's purely uh, his daughter's money um, also when he was asked about what's the sunnah in the mahr how much and things like this he said that the sunnah in the mahr is to make it takhfifu uh, that means to make it light, not to make it difficult. Uh, because there's great benefits as a result of this. Of this. It's more uh, leads to more uh, harmony and, and affection between the husband and the wife. Because if the husband feels that uh, it's, it's a very heavy burden and paying lots of money that it's beyond his capacity, that, you know, it doesn't uh, bring, uh, you know, the, the proper... Um, you know, um, love and affection that should be present between both, right? And especially if, there, if there's some of the mahr is to be still paid. As some people, they um, separate between or split the mahr into uh, what's to be given now and what's to be deferred. And if it's heavy thing or it's a, it's a very, you know, a high number, then it becomes very difficult. And some people, they think, that if he, uh, the guardian uh, of the wife is, if, if, if they make a very high number for the mahr, especially the one that is deferred, that would uh, protect the rights of his daughter, for example. And that's not true. Because if that husband was a bad husband and uh, all the means are taken for the marriage to be saved, but he's a very evil person, uh, he won't divorce because the, he has to give you know a very high number of, of money as a result of the divorce. So that means that he would be more and more evil towards his wife. And this is not something that the guardian would like to have to his daughter, for example. So anyway, so the, mah- the mahar should be something moderate, something that is not something very insignificant. It has to be a significant amount of money for the men to give, but in his capacity, not something that uh, is beyond this capacity. No. Um, also, someone asked that if the one that is um, to be the husband, uh, he his religion and his manners is 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 valid. Is they're pleased with his religion and ma- and and manners, but the the woman or the wife to be, she doesn't want the religion, like she doesn't want the level of religion that he's in or so. What's the ruling in this? Uh, And that based on a previous question, uh, can they force the wife to marry someone? And the sheikh said that it's not permissible to to force her to marry someone. So also in this, she is not to be forced. Uh, Right, so, but then since they're not compatible in religion, uh, you know, and uh, this is something that her wali can prevent such marriage uh, because they're not compatible. And this is something that can cause problems in the marriage. And of course, she should be advised and, you know, to, to fear Allah and, and to be pleased with the fact that, uh, you know, someone is to marry her with, with, with religion and manners and things like this. Also, some of these questions is with regards to the walima and what's the sunnah in the walima? Um, and can it be only to some people and not others? We said that a sunnah, the way the Prophet ﷺ in the walima is that this is upon the husband that he would give the walima as a way of being grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this marriage. And it's something also to feed the people uh, and also the poor and the those who are needy. So there are three benefits of the walima. A shukr lillah, to be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A tawaddud al to be kind and, and loving to the, to the rich and the food for the poor. And also in it is nikah to declare the marriage, and this is sunnah. And the Prophet والسلام, he said to Abdurrahman ibn Awf, Awlim walaw bishah. Make walima even if it's a shah, if it's a goat or a sheep. 
And it's also to be done with al-ma'roof, with goodness. The rich has his uh, ability and the poor has also his ability. And what's in between also according to his ability. So, so according to the ability of the husband. And he says that some people that, that might be poor and they would make the walima like as if they are rich. Uh, and this is not something that is appropriate. So that mat- this matter has to be with what is known and what's according to a person's capacity. And not to be extravagant and things that would be uh, beyond the norm of the people. And for the walima to... Um, to only invite those who are rich and to uh, exclude the poor from it. This is something that the Prophet ﷺ said, شَرُّ طَعَمِ طَعَمُ الْوَلِيمَةِ يُدْعَى إِلَيْهَا مَنْ يَأْبَاهَا وَأَمْنَعُهُ مَنْ يَأْتِيهَا That the worst of the food is the food of the walima, that uh, those who would, uh, don't want to be part of it, they are invited, and those who are, they want to be part of it, they are deprived, meaning the rich versus the poor. No. And of course, it doesn't mean that the person uh, has to invite a whole bunch of people. No, this is, it's, it's valid to invite only, you know, uh, limited numbers of people and, and not to make it an, an extravagant thing. This is valid, of course. Uh, some of the questions are related to a specific culture. So this is, can be different from one place to the, to the other. Um, and of course, you know, with the subject of the of marriage, uh, to get someone married, and if they don't have the ability financially, a person can be given from zakah or from charity, but only only for the necessities, right? Not for the extravagant things, or not for the accessories but just for the necessities that life cannot go on without these necessities. Uh, the question about if, if uh, someone intended for marriage and he doesn't pray, is it permissible to get him married? Uh, and the answer is if he does not pray whatsoever, then of course it's not permissible to get him married in any case or any condition. Because according to that opinion of Imam Ahmed and others, that he's a disbeliever, uh, renegated away from the deen of Islam if he completely doesn't make salah. So anyway, so this is, of course, uh, this is not permissible whatsoever. Uh, and it's haram to accept such a thing. And the same thing when it comes to well-known sin that is being committed and things like this. The same thing with the wali of the woman, if he doesn't pray whatsoever. Uh, and if he does not pray whatsoever, uh, that means he is not to be the wali, the guardian. But if he a sinner, that's fine. You know, it's even though because of it's at, of the time that we're in, and then when people read that the wilaya should not be given to the fasik, or the guardianship should not be given to someone that is fasik, someone that is committing major sins or so, uh, then people might not find someone as a wali. Uh, but, you know, uh, this is, um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us, but uh, again, the, the husband, uh, I mean, the father of the woman, and if he's someone that at least makes salah and things like this, this is valid, inshallah ta'ala. Of course, the question with mixed uh, gatherings and celebrations, of course, this is something that is not permissible. And people should you know, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with these types of things. There's two, uh, two moments of, uh, in one's life that it becomes difficult for people sometimes to enjoy good and forbid evil. And that is the moment of joy and the moment of uh, grief or sadness. When people are happy um, and, you, and someone come and advise them, you know, to um, fear Allah, to be away from sins, they would not you know, for the most part, many of them would not listen because their their emotions are high. And the same thing if uh, at the time of sadness, if they commit sins or do innovations in the deen and so on. 
And many of these things is to please others and to think that uh, this will bring more joy and things like this. But there's no thing, uh, no, there's no way that joy uh, is 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 uh, is in the path of a sin and disobeying Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. Yes, people, their joy is is a sinful one, and the outcome at the end of it is not a good one, uh, because the the outcome of being patient with the Deen of Allah is what is best. And to be patient with the deen of Allah is the most spaciousness of all things. As the Prophet ﷺ said in the hadith, There is no one is given uh, any uh, thing to be given more spacious and better than a sabr. The best thing that a person can be given, the most spacious thing that a person can receive is a sabr. If someone has sabr, then it makes it easy for the person under any condition, whether it's times of ease or times of difficulty, and one of which is to be patient with the deen of Allah, even if you're the only one in your family, right? And even if you're invited to many situations and it's mixed gatherings, be patient and do not go into these types of gatherings and uh, still continue to be kind to the people and bring gift to the to the people, do whatever, but not to be present where the, the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are broken and people are committing sins, rather to be patient. And if people are upset with you, then uh, you are seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And to remember always that the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is what is uh, the most important. And what made it difficult uh, is the people make it difficult for themselves when they disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The last question, inshallah ta'ala, for the day is with regards to the walima. Is it by the marriage contract or when it's declared? Or He said that walima is what is done according to the norms of the people. Some people, they make it after consummating the marriage uh, and they move to their house. And, and some, uh, you know, it's part of the contract. And he says, uh, there's no harm, inshallah ta'ala. So as long as it's being done. طيب بارك الله فيكم. We'll have the second next session inshallah in a few minutes. وصلى الله وسلم بارك على محمد وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله.